antique. This is beautiful. Drew finds the antiques pretty tasty. I can lick that. I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> on a trip to Scotland, he comes face to face with his number one customer. Blimey. Oh, my word. I can recognise a lot of old friends here. That lamp, that lamp, that lamp, that lamp, that lamp. And at a vintage shop in Liverpool, he does his deadliest deal yet. He's come back with a real skeleton. Made me go a bit. Drew Pritchard is one of Britain's leading decorative salvage dealers. Wow. Blimey. Look at this. He scours the country in search of weird and wonderful objects. I love that. Oh, that's a stone stone. He bargains hard. 16. 1750. 16. Sold. And there's nothing he won't buy. I would sell it for 2000. I've got to get a deal. It's in my nature. With help from Rebecca. I'd rather go if you drive me around the bend. Lovely. I'll just go downstairs and we'll sort out payment. And a team of renovators, he transforms thousands of items from junk to gems. At the North Wales HQ of Drew Pritchard Antiques, the team are hard at work fixing... Even a old shoulder. Flogging... £1,800. We've got two available. And forwarding a new style of salvage. I've changed in what I've been buying, and I'm buying really traditional country house antiques. Look. Statues, chairs, chairs and tables. The country house look is just flying out the doors, which is made more stuff. Yeah. Country house style, basically, more than the furniture. It's a layering of colour and comfort and ethnicities. You've got mogul rugs with a beautiful English upholstered sofa on top with Grand Tour models on it on Scottish tables next to it. And when something's worn out, you don't change it. You just put a throw over it. It's that type of look. And Drew's gut instinct for a new elegant look is paying off. All of a sudden you get a new clientele. Most of my old clientele will come along with it and go, yeah, well, I'm enjoying that as well. So it's a natural progression. Maybe it's to do with age. Uh, I like a bit more comfort now I'm getting older. In his never-ending county of Norfolk. We're off to see a lady called Annabelle. They're downsizing the house moving, kids have gone off, um, they've got a big old uh, Georgian manor house. It's a country house sell-off and a coup for Drew. He's been invited to the rectory at a very early stage. Nobody has been in and cherry-picked. It's a bit like going to an antiques fair and you're there before anybody else arrives. We're the first general dealers to get in there. And that is really, really good. It gives us the opportunity, hopefully, to buy incredibly well. Drew and T are heading to the quiet Norfolk village of Carlton Road, half an hour from Norwich. And their dogs, cats, geese, chickens and turkeys has lived at the old rectory for around five years. When we bought the house and moved here, we imagined it was going to be our forever home. But life changes, things move on, and my children have grown up. My husband is working in London again five days a week, and so I'm rattling round in really quite a large house. Ian and Annabelle are downsizing to a smaller home and are selling off the fine antiques. I've got a pretty good idea of what the value is of the pieces here, but I don't know how negotiating with Drew on prices is going to go. I'm not very good at negotiating. <laughs> I'll probably... To say the word proportion as we... Uh, proportion, proportion, proportion. Windows, windows, Georgian, Georgian, Georgian. <laughs> loveliness all over it. Gorgeous. <laughs> Hello. 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 Hi, Drew. How you doing? Hello, Drew. I'm Annabelle. Right. Beautiful. What a lovely space. You love a bit of Georgian, oh. don't you? <laughs> That's you, yeah? Thank you. See, look at this. This is beautiful, Annabelle. Nice. This room partly sold the house to us. You wouldn't need to come much further, would you? You'd no. go. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. As you came into the house, you could see that the place was just crammed with quality. It's not going to be cheap but we can guarantee that it's correct. There's lots of things in here that I do like the look of. The Imari pots, are they a real one? Would be, yes. Imari vases originate in Japan 
and are named after the port in the far south of the country. From the 17th century, the locally made blue and red porcelain was exported worldwide. This pair of vases date back to the 19th century and could be worth around £1,200. I sold one last year with a crack in it for, for a very, very good price. It was older than that one, but those are perfection. Where are we price-wise on them? Something in the region of 500 for the pair. I think that's very fair. Yeah. Yours. Thank, Thank you. Much. The lamps have the perfect country house look, and Drew's done his. When you are in a position to buy items of this quality that have been picked by the best and are in just the right condition, you've just got to buy it. You've just got to do it. You've just got to get your checkbook out and go for it. And that's it. You don't get offered this sort of thing every day. This is a top-notch house call. You got to be so careful today. It's not going to happen. <laughs> You're so careful, never on my shift. <laughs> the country house look never comes in and out of fashion. I'm not interested in current trends. Couldn't give a monkeys. I like to just do what I want to do. And right now, English country house really appeals. Lovely. At the old rectory, cherry picking season is in full swing. And Drew spotted an original Georgian bookcase. 1200. Okay. <laughs> and with each new room, there are more exquisite items. I like the rug. Yeah, it's quite unusual because it's got the wild animals in it. It's lovely. Will 600 buy it? Um, yeah, 600 will do. Yeah. Yeah. And the country house buys keep coming with a George II mahogany wall mirror. Yeah, very happy with that. This is one of the best house calls I've been to, just for the sheer volume of good country house items. And the hunt isn't over. The next room is an upstairs ensuite, because in grand country homes, even bathrooms house antiques. That's what? That's lovely. Um, it belonged to my mother's mother. It used to be the drinks cabinet. Now it's the medicine cabinet. cabinet. I'm guessing this is on the not for sale list. It's a potentially for sale. Really? Piece. Yes. Right. In the corner is one of the sweetest little pieces of furniture I've seen in an awful long time. It's oddly small, diminutive, but achingly pretty. And you could drop that into any house in Britain, no matter what it was, and it would look good. This cabinet is made from a chest of drawers and a cupboard which have been married together. The thin burr walnut veneer dates it to the mid-19th century. It could be worth around £2,000. It's absolutely lovely. What would you want for it? Um, I'd love it. £1,000. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah, that's lovely. Thank you. Salvage Don Drew Pritchard is in rural Norfolk. He's filling his boots and his van, buying his new favourite thing, country house antiques. Hey, yours. Thank, Thank you. Much. In an upstairs bathroom, he's found a walnut cabinet that he's set his heart on. Look at this. Yeah, Absolutely good. lovely. What would you want for it? Um, I love it. Absolutely love it. Give me a number. I can say yes or no. 1300 I think I'm on it there. I think I'll get 1800 for. Yeah. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Absolutely love it. If it ever piece of furniture, I can lick that. It's just <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it. No. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think I'd get the opportunity to buy a piece of furniture like that. If I'm able to buy something like that, I'm always going to have a go at it. I've got to ask. And that's when asking works. I said, that's very good sell it. She goes, yeah. There's a profit in it, but it's just such a wonderful thing to have around. I don't really want to let it go. Before Drew leaves, there's one last room to check out. <gasps> Look at that. That's lovely. 20th century machined blanket, I think what it was. And then it's been placed on a piece of red felt to create a bit of weight to it and make it into a, a carpet or a rug. No great age, but the colour is... The tapestry is currently used as a floor covering, 
but could easily make a wall hanging or throw and could be worth around 300 pounds. For sale? Yes. How much? A couple of hundred, I guess. I'd be, yeah. I'd be happy at 150. That would be. There you go. That's yours. Marvellous, thank you. Top day, really. I bought a really fantastic mix of stock, all with one single aesthetic behind it and in wonderful condition. T has got to do a perfect job today. He's not packing the van today, he's fine art packing the van today. He's got to do it dead right and I'll be watching it. The best purchase of today, there's two. The pair of Amari table lamps, but then it really comes down to that cabin in the bathroom. It's just so good. Why I do this job is to find things like that. We've outlaid a few thousand pounds, but that's what the job is. You've got to just sometimes go, yep, you know, balls to the wall and do it. I am very happy with the prices that Drew and I have agreed. I think he's been been very generous. Thank you very much. Lovely to see you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much for today. Have see a you good again. Trip. Will Thank do. You. Bye. Bye. I'm tired after all my spending. Are you? Yeah. Check up a bit later. Yeah. We did well there. As long as you've packed everything properly, which I can guarantee you haven't. Well, by packed, you mean through in the back of the van in some sort of ramshackle night. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Like you usually yeah. do. We arrive back at the Clandidno place. Successful? Extremely. Oh. A pair of 18th century Oriental Amari vases turned into table lamps. 500 quid. Oh, very good price. Oh. What beautiful wall hanging that would make. Yeah. Oh, that's lovely. 150 oh. quid. Fabrics and tapestries, Drew doesn't know an awful lot about, so he buys because he likes it, not from knowledge. Drew bought it because it's pink. His slightly feminine side overtook him here, but I'm glad. It's a beautiful piece. Colours. It was like a proper old-school house clearance job. Oh, you must have been in your element oh, there. loved it. Country house furnishings and my client base works well on two different levels, really. A lot of it goes into the sort of interior design world. And then a lot of my clients have really lovely, beautiful old country houses, so they need fits for them. To market the items well, Rebecca is doing her research. Imari, Japanese. They're 19th century. They always had this sort of three colours, and this shows really well. Sort of burnt orange coral and a blue on a white background, and then they'd highlight with little sort of flecks of gilt, just to sort of accentuate the foliage. It's very typical to have painting of bowls of flowers. Quite often there would be some sort of phoenix as well. And nothing is exactly... The Amari lambs are likely to go to a private buyer. But there's another market that's just as important to Drew. A large part of my business is selling on to the trade. And I would say 25 to 30% of what I do goes straight into predominantly fashion retailers and shops. To feed this demand, Drew's always on the lookout for original fixtures and fittings. Old uh, fashion retailers sort of stuff, basically, is very desirable because new people selling fashion want that sort of the, the feeling of longevity. And if they buy old fittings, it instantly gives their shops that feeling. Um, and it looks good. Opportunities to buy such sought-after stock in bulk don't come up often, but that's exactly what's happened today. We're off to Plow, and one of the guys has been there his whole career. He's a proper tailor. Like many of these old businesses, they're closing down. The kids don't want to take over. That's a shame. Drew's got the chance to buy the complete contents of the shop, and it's an opportunity he can't turn down. The shop they're visiting is a five-hour drive north to Glasgow. Home to around 600,000 people, it's Scotland's largest city. It's a modern metropolis that's driving forward, leaving some of the older businesses behind. The closing down tailors will hopefully have some rare items amongst the kilts, sporrans, uniforms and woggles. Were you a cub? I was a cub. Uh, I was in Scout. Did you get your you antiques badge? I didn't get my antiquing badge, no. I was in Scouts for two weeks and got chucked out for bad behaviour. 
turn around and make signs. You make inappropriate signs. <laughs> You're kidding. No, really. We were nine. <laughs> Based in the Shorelands area of Glasgow, R.W. Stevens is run by trained tailor Douglas Stevens and his brother-in-law, Paul Davy. It was my mother and father that started the business uh, in 1950. I came into the shop when I was about 21, 22, and I've been here ever since. I came in as a newbie 36 years ago, <laughs> so I'm still the junior. Today, it belongs to a bygone era. In a few weeks, the shutters will come down for the final time as Douglas and Paul begin their retirement. We're not looking to give stuff away. It's one of our last chances to get some income. <laughs> a few weeks' time, we won't be getting... It's a great chance for Drew to get his hands on the sort of old-fashioned shop fittings that are so popular with his fashion clients. And the first place to explore is the heart of the business, the tailoring workshop. This is where the hard work was done. <laughs> ah, what's to go in here then? Everything. Uh, what's stay. This machine, this chair. Right. Obviously, the singer chairs. I'd be interested in that one. You have another one? I have another one there. See how kind we were to our staff. We Give them cushions. Ten years ago, a cushion. <laughs> Singer uh, made, obviously, the sewing machines, but they made all the accoutrements that would go with it. So they made the lights, they made the treadles, the tables, the worktops, and the chairs and the stools. Scotland, 1867, to make the most of the local steelworks. These cast iron and wood adjustable chairs date from the mid-20th century and could be worth around £200 each. I'll give you £120 a pop. Well, you think they're worth a bit more than that because I know they are in they demand. Are. They are. That's why yeah, I'm buying them. <laughs> yeah, sure. Well, that's right. You know they are in demand. I've got to buy them for the best price I can. So one last bid, three hundred quid the pair. That's it. Done. I'm done then. At that. Yeah. Okay. If that's a, the best yep. you can do, I think we'll be quite happy with that. I'll take these away. Okay. Thank you. Done. Thank you. I paid three hundred for the chairs. That's the absolute top that you know I'm, I'm slashing what i want to make on them um a bit uh, i'm gonna have to try and get away with no restoration at all and just give them a wipe to get those down the road look at these mannequins yeah. Yeah. do you know what? i've never seen them with those arms on mannequins very common but they come in so many variations that there's always ones i haven't seen before popping up these tailors dummies were made in the mid-20th century the wire and ball arms are an unusual feature, and they could be worth around £200 each. Can I get one of those? Can you go, um, 350 for the three? We always hope for more, but I think P50 would be a fancy Yeah, straight in with the highest bid there, I think, guys. Yeah, that's... I think i OK, thank you. OK, thank you. Pay top dollar for all three in the house. They look good in dressing rooms, but equally as good back in a shop window. Exactly what they're designed for. Drew's already found some rare retail pieces in the tailor's workshop, and there's still the main shop to search through. Tell me about these ledgers things. These here. are a couple of old tartan books, sample books. It's not comprehensive. There is no comprehensive list. Um, How many tartans is there? Uh, there's over 11,000 registered in the Scottish Register of Tartan. We've had a really good find at the shop. Spectacularly good, actually. There's a pair of very beautifully bound, large ledgers. These books really have got it all. They've got a fantastic big strap with a bronze buckle, ostrich skin, all the way around the edges. And you open them up, and it's hundreds of different tartans. Absolutely lovely. These sample books were used to order tartan for kilts and other Highland wear. They probably date to the late 19th century and could be worth around £500. Um, what are you going to do with these? Open to offers. You're going to sell them? Yep. The one thing I'm surprised about is the last didn't want to keep them. I thought they'd have had one each, you know, just as a sort of a keepsake. They're not bothered. I'll have them all day long. Superb. Now, this is something I definitely haven't bought before. You'll have to give me a clue what you want for these. <laughs> Has anybody made any offers on these? Um, I've had £120 for the two. Well, I will definitely better that. I'll give you 200 quid for the two. In 
his hands on the city's industrial heritage. He spotted a hundred-year-old pair of tartan sample books, which he's determined to walk away with. Now, this is something I definitely haven't bought before. You'll have to give me a clue what you want for these. <laughs> Has anybody made any offers on these? Yeah, we've had £120 for the two. Well, I will definitely better that. I'll give you 200 quid for the two. Do you think, Douglas? I, well, I think that's uh, fair enough. That's I, with I, a heavy heart, that one, it. isn't yeah. it? You, no, so <laughs> you can see. Uh, it's difficult, but yeah. No, yeah. OK, we'll go cool. on now. Cool. That's very fair enough. Lovely. Okay. So pleased with yeah. those. Okay. Really nice. I would love these books to go back into the fashion trade. I would love them to go to Savile Row in London. I really would. Just as a shop fit, just as something to have in your window. And with his real coloured card ones with the pulls on the front. Is there anything in them? No, they're empty. They're empty. empty. So they're up for grabs? Yep. Yeah. OK, I'd be interested in those as well. There's about 100 of them. Just the gaffer tape. No, but that's part of it. Look how good they look up there. It's a shop fit, you know? Now, these are cardboard with wooden fronts and backs. Little bronze pull on the front, little letter rack on it. Lovely. They've been repaired with old sort of duct tape. That's OK. They look great. The storage boxes are worn but original and probably date back to the 1960s. Their charm lies in their shabby appearance, a look popular with interior designers for shops. For the job lot of 100, they could be worth around £5 each. What would you want per box if I just took the lot? Hey. Mm. A couple of quid a box. Yeah, 200 quid sounds about enough. You know, they might offer you more for them, but I'd rather sell them all and get them out of the way. Yeah. 200 quid the lot? I think that would be all right. Yeah. I'll uh, yeah. take them away if that's OK with you. That was OK. Thank you very Just much. Thank you. Thank you. Before they leave the Highland store, there's just enough time for T to channel his inner Celt. You'd look good in town. This is the muted green Douglas tart. Kilts. They're extremely good looking. They make you look quite tough. They're very cool, I think. <laughs> <laughs> you need a sparring. Do you like it? Do you feel, do you feel liberated? Yeah. I feel I should stand over a great table. Do you want me to sit in the chair? Yeah, cross and cross my legs. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what? No. no. <laughs> T did look the part, he did. Drew has bought well from the retiring tailors, adding just over a thousand pounds to their pension pot. Today, all in all, a good day. We've come up to do a shop clearance. And you're always hoping to find a bit of a gem, and we did. Find of the day today was definitely those two folios full of the tartan. They've got it all. They're clearly beautifully made. There's a pair. They're in fantastic condition. A bit of history right there in your hands. Sorted? Yeah. Thank you so much for today. OK, cheers. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Jim. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Thanks, Sam. Bye. Bye. Well, there you go. You got lucky. I didn't. I had to carry all the boxes. <laughs> it's a shame we're losing an institution like that, though, isn't it? Yeah. Imagine going in there every year for your school uniform. As Drew is in Glasgow, he's grabbing the opportunity to call in at the home of one of his most loyal customers. This chap has bought more single items off me in the last two years than any client ever. Really? Really. I've got a load of stuff in the back of the van for him, and I said I'd drop it off ourselves, because, to be honest, I'm a bit bemused. What on earth he's doing with it all? Drew's number one fan is plumber Colin Mackay. Oh. Drew, how are you doing? All right. Yeah, good. Good to see you. You're looking well. Please meet you. T boys, you, you all right? Yeah. Good, thank you. Can I come in? Yes, please. I can spot something already that's come from me there. Yeah, there's a few bits and bobs as you'll probably find out. Colin has bought over a hundred items from Drew, and his whole. Uh, few. Uh, you've got a few bits in there, haven't you? Yeah, a few bits. I can recognise a lot of old friends here. That lamp. Yeah. That lamp. Yeah. That lamp. Yeah. That lamp. That lamp. There yes. That table. He bought that up in northern, 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 northern oh, Scotland. Yes. Came so off the Shetlands, that. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Seriously? Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK. Would have been in its day in the 1870s. Good cutting-edge thing to have that. Very, uh... Yeah. Is that right? With the fringe, the fringe yeah, yeah, yeah. on it? See the bowl underneath there, the stripy bowl? Yeah. That's part of my own collection. I've had that in the house for years. I love it. I love That's the glaze on it. It's absolutely fantastic. Wonderful thing. Do you want it back or I'll keep it? Or... No. You sure? No. I'll find another one. He buys the things I really like. He buys things with wear, excellent patina, originality. I'm like cars and all that kind of gambling. 
And I'm getting this bit of cash, I'll try and put it in something. Drew sends T off to get Colin's latest purchases, which show yet again that the two passionate collectors share very similar tastes. You bought another thing from my own collection. She bought the three-step angle boys. Yeah. And you bought the velvet duck. The velvet duck, I did. Well, which I've had. That's been on a shelf in my house for about 15 years. Well, there you go. Oh, there you go. <laughs> you go. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Not seen one like that before. Loads of the wooden ones. Wow. But yeah, that's just been. I walked through my front door and it was on a shelf up in there. Wow. I didn't do the naff thing of putting yellow wire on it. Put black on it to sort of set it off. Absolutely superb. Yeah. Fantastic. Happy with that? It's a Stota. A Stota. Glasgow Good. Excellent. It's a Stota. It's a Stota. Yeah, it's oh, beautiful. Excellent. That's fantastic. It is very, very nice, actually, to see where all of this... And live with it. Thank you. Lovely fantastic. Tea. Tea. Pleasure. I've got to find some more stuff. I know what you want now. We'll just send it straight. Yeah. Ah, you might as well. <laughs> Delivery done. Drew and T are heading back down the country. But before returning to base, they're making a stop in Liverpool. Once the gateway port to the world, it's a city that's always rich in salvage. And Drew's heard of a dealer couple he's never visited before. OK, T, we're in Kensington, which is near the Knowledge Quarter, apparently. OK. So all the unis and that sort of thing. Any new place in Liverpool is always worth coming to see because there's that much good gear that comes out of here. You have to remember what a powerhouse this city was in the 18th and 19th century with the port. Every now and again, it'll spit out. Run by Diane and Mick Green. It's a 2,000-square-foot shop named after Diane's mother. She started off doing it with her mother, and then it just, it just grew into a livelihood. I got from vintage costume jewellery into small parts of furniture into this, basically. It's a random mixture. We don't particularly go out looking for specific kind of ears or pieces. There is so many things in here hidden away that, you know, you can't possibly say what he's going to like and what he isn't going to like. He might not even know himself till he sees it. Hello. Hello. Nice Hello. to meet you. you. Come in. Thank you. When did you start doing this? We've actually been in this building for three and a half years. Prior to that, we had a smaller shop. What was that first shed I had? Probably... 20 foot by 20 foot, yeah. and then I went to, in the end, um, 20,000 square foot set in eight acres of land, and we filled it. Go well, on, I'll have it. You were hoping at some point to have something good in there as well, weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> when we if came that's in... That's why I keep them around you, it's that support. That <laughs> that's me. exactly what she does with me. <laughs> Can we have a look around the rest? <laughs> Tell us about these, Nick. Oh, I've only just got them. Um, quite a lump. Yeah, they um, are, aren't they? They're most yeah. of one of their university buildings. Which university? John Morse? Uh, yeah. Right. Specimen cabinets, I believe. This pair of sarcophagus topped oak display units are in their original unrestored condition. They date to the late 19th century and could be worth around £3,500. How many have you got? 700 odd each for them. OK, that's not cheap. Well. Today it's trade to trade, so I've got to be harsh. I've got to get stuff at the right money or walk. 800. For the pair? Yep. Um, wife, what do you want to do there? Nine. God almighty, that's cheap. <laughs> Good stuff. <coughs> Get the boss. Oh, tea? Yeah. I'm sorry. It's all right, I've just been day off. I just decided. <laughs> This is exactly why I come to big cities like Liverpool. But it's quality, and they've got that much of it lying around. Every now and again, the city spits a bit out. And that is what I'm looking for. These cabinets piece of furniture. I got that over the little farmhouse. I've seen what you've got on it. Yeah. Obviously, I can't go anywhere near that. Uh, it has got one very good thing going for it, which is the tiles. And they're by a guy called Moore. And he did lots of these Shakespearean scenes. This is pure aesthetic movement. The aesthetic movement was an a weird, crazy, psychedelic offshoot of the arts and crafts and gothic movement. What happened, a lot of uh, Chinese and Japanese-influenced antiques were flooding into the market. These guys picked up on this and ran with it, but it's hard to sell. It is not everybody's cup of tea, and you need a big old house for it. So I want to buy it, because I want to own it, because I like it, but I don't want to put a lot of money into it. This ebonised oak hall stand dates from the 1870s. 
the distinctive tiles by Victorian designer John Moore Smith were for thousand pounds. What are we thinking? I'd be selling it fixed for under 600 quid. Size is everything. Bigger is sometimes not better. It's just, I don't know what you paid for it on my mm, business. It cost me um, a few hundreds. I think we're going to be too far apart. I'm, I'm going to be wanting to pay you low hundreds for it, purely because of the size. OK. I'm going to have to nick it because it's just too difficult. Nick it for how much? Salvage trader Drew Pritchard is at Patsy's place in Liverpool and he's haggling hard over a huge Victorian hall stand. Just, I don't know, we're going to be too far apart. I'm, I'm going to be wanting to pay you low hundreds for it, purely because of the size. OK. I'm going to have to nick it because it's just too difficult. Nick it for how much? 250 quid. That's it. Very, very low off. You don't have to sell it to me. You will get more from somebody else for it, because I will. Yeah, no, go on. Sure. Yeah. See, end up talking to you for hours, and then we do the deal. I've paid two fifty for it. Turns out Mick paid two fifty for it. He's taken a punt. I'm taking the punt. He's turned some stock over. We call it a push. So we've bought it for that and sold it for the same. We've just pushed it. We've done nothing more. We haven't advanced it. That's my job. Drew's picking up these items at good prices because customers for large furniture are few and far between. And Mick and Diane want to move them on. OK. Um, so it's got a skeleton in it. Yeah, but the cabinet is lovely. Have you got the I keys? I really love the cabinet. But unfortunately, no. No? I found them taped to the top sometimes. You know how to open that, though, don't you? Skeleton key. <laughs> <laughs> how much is it? I'd like about... Six months Not out of the way. If you had the keys. Drew's after the glazed mahogany cabinet as well as the object locked within. The case dates from the mid-19th century and could fetch around £600. The real Victorian skeleton, which would have been used as a medical teaching aid, could be worth around £400. 400 quid. Yeah, Sold. It's a human skeleton at the end of the day. I've bought Stranger Things, but it's up there, sort of top five odd things I've ever bought. Took a chance buying that big hall stand. It's an odd one, I'll grant you, but it's very original. Initially, we didn't have a key for the glazed skeleton cabinet, but Mick, on his own, came back and said, I've opened it. A bit of Irish ingenuity. We don't know how he did it, but he's opened it. So we now can wrap correctly the skeleton inside for transportation. Glad to get shut up a few pieces, the cumbersome item. The museum pieces are heavy to shift, manpower involved. Lovely. Cheers, thanks very much. Thanks very much. Pleasure. Thank Cheers, Mick. Thanks Thanks nice to meet you. Thank you. Cheers. 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 Bye-bye. Bye. All the best. Well, there you go. Result. Nice. Nice and heavy. Nobody ever said it was going to be easy to. Or light. Or clean. <laughs> <laughs> Arriving back at headquarters, the team are waiting to find out what weird and wonderful pieces they'll be restoring and selling. Welcome home. Hello. How are we? We're all right, you OK? Yeah. Right. Wow. Ooh. Good golly. That's lovely. So, monolithic hall stand, 250 quid. What? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's cheap. It had to be. That might be in the box age. Sarcophagus topped oak museum cabinets of not massive size. Oh, good. Really saleable. We've sold every single one we've got. These are special. They're not on legs. They're actually on a solid base with cupboards. It's just fantastic. They just shout retail. See if we can sell them now. OK. Challenging me. Yep. <laughs> Want these sold by the end of the day. OK. <laughs> and Drew's about to reveal what he's bought with the display cabinet. This one came with a real skeleton. A real one? It's come back with a real skeleton. Oh, really? Here's the skeleton, which is ancient. Is that real? It's real. Now, there is a trade in these. Yeah. We do know somebody we can pass it on to. Would you not just 
sell it with the cabinet? Possibly. The big lumps of furniture I bought at Patsy's place, thing is a safe bet in the antiques business at all. With buying big museum cabinets, you're really taking a chance because there's a very limited market for them. They have to be cheap because we're going to have the money sat around for a long time. Of all the thousands of items they bought and sold, a human skeleton is a first for the team at Drew Pritchard Antiques. So I'm going to take some pictures. Oh, it's very, very old. I mean, we had them in school, didn't we? We've all seen skeletons. The age of the skeleton and the way it's wired means it's all above board, it's all kosher. But you have to treat that skeleton with respect. Be nice to find, find it a really nice home. Whilst Rebecca gets on with finding a new owner for the skeleton, the lad set to work respects starts by removing the locks from the inside. There we go, that's our first lock. So Carl can machine a key for this now, and then we can pop it back on. Carl's challenge is to find a key from his collection that's as close to the original as possible. That might work. That one won't. That one might. Just not quite bringing it home. Nearly. And we'll braise some extra meat on top of it. With the key close to fitting, Carl needs to work his magic, brazing on a piece of brass alloy and filing off the surplus. works. Whilst Carl finishes the locks, Alex glues up the rickety joints on the carcass, then replaces the loose hinges and the top. Then it's on to the Foss Knight, which is the original piece. Took this back to the workshop so we can make a copy of the moulding, which we've done. So now the idea is stick this piece back on with some glue and pins, and then we can uh, colour and polish it to match. Perfect. After skilled restoration, the cabinets are ready for sale. But how have Drew's other purchases fared? From Patsy's place, the hall stand is packed up and picked up for a buyer in Surrey, whose apartment in an Edwardian mansion has the original hallway big enough to accommodate it. Of the items bought at the Scottish tailors, the mannequins are sold back to the trade for a shop fit out. The Singer chairs go to a private buyer for their home as Clan Tartan is found in Book One. Of the country house antiques from the old rectory, the pink tapestry is snapped up instantly by none other than Drew's most prolific purchaser, Colin Mackay. The Victorian skeleton and display case are sold to a collector in Stoke on Trent. That way, you know. Nicola Stewart is a body-piercing artist whose home is filled with a collection of curios and he's just received his latest edition. As soon as I saw it, I thought that would look beautiful in the dining room. It's not morbid. I don't see it as a sort of morbid fascination at all. There's nothing morbid about it. It's, it's a beautiful thing. It's got history to it. It's got a past. I suppose some people are not an expert on these things, but it's definitely got some real age to it because of how rudimentary it's put together. Amongst the religious iconography and anatomical models, the skeleton is now a focal point of Nicholas's family home. It was a person, it was had a life, and now it's it's still continuing to sort of live within someone else's life. Sounds strange, you know, but I, I'd quite happily be sitting in someone's house when I die as a skeleton. You're not forgotten, I suppose. <laughs>